Salut! It's been a while. If you are watching this in the future, usually our beginner class finishes at the 30 second class. But I promise to record the summaries of all the classes up to the 40th lesson for those who want to go further or for intermediate students. Anyway, today we're going to go over the past conditional tense. And then we'll talk about the difference between entendre dire que and entendre parler de. Okay, let's get started with the past conditional. What is even this? Well, you will remember that we just saw the present conditional in lesson 32. The present conditional means that something would be done if a condition is met. Well, the past conditional is pretty easy to learn for you because it's the same thing in the past. Instead of translating I would eat, for example, which would imply a present conditional, the past conditional will translate I would have eaten. This means that something would have happened if something did happen. The condition that needs to be met was in the past. I'm going to show you some examples, but first, I need to show you how to put it together. Here is the good news. This is a compound tense. Just like the passé composé, the plus perfect, and the futur antérieur we have already seen. This means that you only need to make sure you know three things. First, how to conjugate the auxiliaries avoir and être in the present conditional. Second, which verb use the auxiliary avoir and which verbs use the auxiliary être. You should already know this since they are the same as the passé composé, etc. Third, you need to know your past participles. So to sum it up, the past conditional is put together this way. You have your subject, then you add your auxiliary in the present conditional, and then you add your past participle. Okay, let's take our verb manger and conjugate it with the first person of the present je in all our compound tenses, finishing with the past conditional so you can see it in action and you can spot the differences. So in the passé composé, I ate will be j'ai mangé. I'll do a quick analysis of just this one so you all remember what's happening here. First, we have our subject, je, which becomes j apostrophe in front of the vowel a in a. Then we know the verb manger uses the auxiliary avoir, so we conjugated it in the present for our passé composé. This is why we have j'ai. Finally, we add our past participle manger, and we get j'ai mangé, meaning I ate. Now, I had eaten, using the plus perfect, is j'avais mangé. I will have eaten, using our futur antérieur, is j'aurais mangé. Pay close attention to how I spelled aurait. Here, aurait is in the future because there's no s in the end. Now, our past conditional is going to sound exactly the same at the first person, but it is actually different. I would have eaten would be j'aurais mangé. As I said, it sounds the same, but look at the s at the end of aurait. This is because the auxiliary avoir in the first person sounds exactly the same in the future and in the present conditional. But if we were to use the second person of the singular tu, it would actually sound different. You will have eaten, using the plus perfect, is tu aura mangé. But you would have eaten, using the past conditional, is tu aurais mangé. Okay, I'm going to conjugate two verbs using the past conditional, but if this is complicated for you right now, please go back to the lessons on the future and the present conditional, so you can make sure you know how to conjugate avoir and être in both of these tenses. So, the verb manger in the past conditional is conjugated as follows. Please repeat after me. J'aurais mangé. Tu aurais mangé. Il aurait mangé. Nous aurions mangé. Vous auriez mangé. Ils auraient mangé. Now, with the verb that uses the auxiliary être, for example, the verb partir, in the past conditional, it is conjugated as follows. Please repeat after me. Je serais parti. Tu serais parti. 
Il serait parti. Nous serions partis. Vous seriez parti. Il serait parti. Remember that with the auxiliary être, the past participle agrees in gender and number. That's why you can spot I've put some dots and e's and s's on some persons. That's a good exercise. Try to ask yourself why I put them on some and not others and figure out the logic behind it. All right, now there's one more special verb we need to know about in the past conditional, and it's the verb devoir, which translates must in English. If you use the verb in the past conditional, it will mean should have. So, for example, if I want to say I should have called you, I would say in French, j'aurais dû t'appeler. Okay, now let's see what's the difference with entendre dire que and entendre parler de. All right, this one is pretty simple. Let's just focus on entendre dire que, and this one is used for hearsay about facts and action. For example, I heard that you were French, or I heard that you had a promotion at work, or I heard that you would be in Paris next summer. With entendre dire que, you can use mostly the imparfait, the pluperfect, or the conditional. Now, the difference between the three is that you use the imparfait if the action is still happening, like in our example, I heard that you were French. You use the pluperfect if the action already happened, like in our example, I heard that you had a promotion at work. And you use the conditional if the action has not yet happened, i.e. in the future, like in our example, I heard that you would be in Paris next summer. Now, if you paid attention, you may have noticed that in English, these sentences use different tenses as well. When we use the imparfait in French, usually, in English, you use the past tense. When we use the pluperfect in French, usually, in English, we also use the pluperfect. And when we use the conditional in French, we usually use the modal would in English. Now, let's focus on entendre parler de. This one is used when you hear about something or someone, and in English, it will translate to hear about. Emphasis on the word about. Basically, you will conjugate the verb entendre in the tense you want to use and add parler de and then something or someone. For example, I heard about you would simply be j'ai entendu parler de toi. And I'm going to hear about your cat will be je vais entendre parler de ton chat. This one is pretty simple, I believe, but let me know in the comments if this was complicated. And also, while you are down there, why don't you try to make the following sentence for me in French? I heard about this lesson and I heard that Fred was a good teacher. <laughs> All right, j'espère que vous passerez une bonne journée et je vous verrai la prochaine fois. Allez